everything that makes a sound vibrates. And everything that vibrates makes a sound. Why is that something that's important to know? We'll stick around and watch this edition of Service Done Right and find out. Today's episode of Service Done Right is made possible by Advanced Professional, helping the shop owners and professionals keep the wheels turning. To find the location nearest to you, visit www.my.advancepro.com. Car manufacturers spend a lot of money engineering their vehicles for maximum ride quality. As a result, most of us have become accustomed to a nice, smooth, quiet ride. Any buzz, bang, creak, or groan is likely to have your customer at your doorstep with a concern. These types of concerns are grouped in a family called NVH for noise, vibration, and harshness. It includes anything that could cause the driver or occupants to have a less than perfect ride experience. It's also interesting to note that NVH customer concerns are on the increase, especially when it comes to EV vehicles. After all, they make little to no noise to begin with, so any noise is going to generate a concern. In the old days, we relied on our experience and a seat of the pants feel to troubleshoot the problem. Well, that worked when the overall ride quality wasn't that great to begin with. NBH issues then were generally easy to spot and correct. Isolating the cause of these concerns can be a real challenge. It can also result in a lot of wasted effort and wasted money replacing parts that are not causing the issue. That is, unless you're actually applying some science to the diagnosing of NBH concerns. Let's start by defining exactly what we mean when we refer to NVH. Noise is an unexpected and or an unpleasant sound that occurs when unexpected or unwanted. It can be a single occurrence or it can be repetitive. Vibration is something that occurs continuously and can be caused by a component that is moving in any of the three axes front to back, side to side, or up and down. And harshness is the sudden or aggressive suspension feel triggered by a single event, like hitting a pothole, the lack of give or response to road variations. Do you recall what I said at the very beginning? Everything that makes a noise vibrates, and everything that vibrates makes a noise. The human ear typically can only hear sounds in the 20 to 20,000 hertz, that is frequency, range. Causes of NBH in the 20 to 200 hertz range can be heard or felt as a vibration depending on the individual. But causes in the higher frequency range, that is 200 to 20,000 hertz, can typically only be felt as a vibration again, depending on the individual. As a personal story, many years ago, I was giving a customer concern of squealing brakes. For the life of me, I could not hear the brakes making any noise. So I drove it into the shop and I asked another technician to see if he could assist. Well, he had no problem hearing the brake squeal and was really surprised that I couldn't. Unfortunately, just a byproduct of getting older. And any good diagnostician is going to realize his limitations and know that he's not going to be effective in diagnosing these type of concerns without a little high-tech help. And there are two great choices for getting that kind of high-tech help. The first is offered by Pico, and it's their NVH analyzer. The other, and the one I'm going to use today, is the automotive test solutions Intelligent Vibration Analyzer. And that brings me to a point that I really want to clarify. Let's say that your customer brings in the vehicle with a concern that they can hear a buzzing noise in the cabin of the vehicle. 
you take it for a test drive and sure enough you can hear the buzzing and as you slowly move your hand along the dash you discover a trim panel that's vibrating applying just a small amount of pressure to the trim panel causes the noise to go away but is the trim panel really the source of the problem a worn motor mount for example could be the source of the vibration that is traveling through the body to the instrument panel and eventually to the trim panel. If you install a new trim panel but don't correct the mount, the new trim panel will buzz just like the old one did. But what if the trim panel was indeed the source of the vibration? You know, engines vibrate all the time. That's just a given. What if the trim panel had worn or missing mounting clips? Would that allow the trim panel to buzz in its mounts? One of the challenges that makes diagnosing these types of concerns so problematic at times is that vibration travels. And depending on what route it's taking, it can be amplified or muted. It's very important, therefore, to find the true cause of the problem and not just repair the symptoms of the problem. Let's apply what I've been talking about to a real world case. In this case, it's a 2005 Ford F-350 Dually with a six liter power stroke engine. The concern is a vibration, almost a buzzing type of vibration that can be felt beginning at 25 miles per hour on up. This type of vibration can be caused by a number of different things. So I don't want to waste any more time than necessary to find the one thing that is causing the problem. And that's where the tool that I'm using today comes into play. The Automotive Test Solutions Intelligent Vibration Analyzer. It's got a sophisticated software program that will literally tell me where on the vehicle this vibration is originating from to help me locate it quickly and efficiently. I've already placed the sensors on the vehicle and we're going to use all four to begin. Each sensor should be placed as close to the wheel as possible. When you route the wires though, note that you should not route them through the window because if you accidentally close the window, it's very likely you will damage the wire and lose the signal from that sensor. Instead, route them under the door between the door and the seal on the frame. It will help protect the wire a little more effectively. One nice feature about the IVA is that the wire has four magnets attached to it that are movable along the length of the wire. This allows you to attach this to the frame of the vehicle to help keep the wire out of the way so it doesn't get accidentally hung up during your test drive. With the sensors connected to the IVA module in the cab of the vehicle, the next thing to do is to connect that to my computer. Now there is a dedicated cable for that and it's also connected to the DLC, which is a nice feature. It, it's able to read and decipher the VIN and know what vehicle it's attached to. But there are some bits of information that we have to input. First, make sure that you select what type of drive it has. In this case, rear wheel drive. You can also select front wheel, four wheel, or all wheel drive from the menu. With that selected, the next step is to put in the tire size. In, uh, list the tires that are on the vehicle and don't use the information from the tire placard. If there are different sizes of tires on the vehicle, make sure you input that as well. Next, for this vehicle, we need to put in the final drive ratio or the rear end ratio. In this case, it's a 410 gearing. So we'll put that information into that menu window. Now there is an automatic feature, and if you want to use that, just read the instructions on how to proceed. Last is putting in the individual transmission gear ratios. Now there is a default setting for that, but if you want to be really accurate, take the time to look this up in your service information system and input that data as well. Once all of this is done, you're going to turn the key on and press the start button. This will allow the IBA module to calibrate all of the sensors. Then we're going to start the vehicle and take it out for our test drive. 
The test drive is best taken on as smooth a road surface as possible, so find one near your shop that you can use as your own personal test bed. Once you're on that test bed, go ahead and monitor the data on the screen, preferably with a helper, and as soon as you see anything start to flash or change uh, color in the values side of the menu or on the main screen where we have that depiction of the vehicle, press that little record button on the IVA box itself. This will save the information five seconds prior and five seconds after the press the button. It allows you to look at it in more detail once you get back to the shop. But that's really the nice feature about this tool. You don't have to be an NVH expert to use it. The lights will tell you where the problem area lies. Well, I'm back from the test drive and it didn't take long for the values associated with the drive shaft to light up like a Christmas tree. I hit the record button so I could save the data and review it here in the shop, but it's pretty obvious that the problem lies somewhere in the drive shaft. I'll go ahead and get it up in the air. We'll check the U-joints to make sure there isn't any problem there. And if they're okay, it's time to send the drive shaft out and check it for balance. Yes, both the Intelligent Vibration Analyzer offered by Automotive Test Solutions and the Pico NVH kit have a learning curve, but the resources for learning how to master these tools are readily available and both companies offer stellar support for their products. The big thing is putting the tools to work for you to minimize the time spent isolating the cause of your customers' NVH concerns. Thanks for watching.